be in the back. There's still time. You can run back there, chug you a, a cup of coffee and get awake. Uh, before we continue on with our worship service, I just want to make a quick announcement uh, for all my ladies that are here. Tomorrow we're starting off our uh, the New Year 2021 right. We have our first women's meeting coming up. It'll be here tomorrow at seven o'clock. Um, there we also have a special treat, Miss Lynn. You guys know who Miss Lynn is. She is going to be up here at six fifteen for anybody. Um, she's going to pretty much be giving us some cooking lessons starting at six fifteen for some awesome Filipino cuisine. So if you can make it to that at six fifteen, we'd love to have you. If not, we're going to start our actual um, study at seven o'clock tomorrow night here so please don't miss it let's start this year off right it's going to be really fun an awesome time of fellowship and um, you know it's just so great for us women to be able to get together and put aside our motherly duties our wifely duties you know our job whatever and just come and fellowship together as women so um, we'd love to invite you to that and let's just continue to worship this morning
Amen. I think somebody ought to give him praise this morning. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. Amen. Uh, first of all, um, I'm pretty much an extrovert, but doing this is really out of my comfort zone, so it takes a lot of courage to, uh, to do this. Sometimes we get discouraged because our numbers are small, because we have to be isolated, because we can't do this, we can't do that. But Jesus started with 12 people, and with 12 people is how he started the ministry and how he turned the world upside down. And God wants to use us wherever we're at. Does it matter if it's at Walmart, if it's at HEB, uh, if it's home with your children, wherever, it, uh, as you're driving, God wants to use us. And he wants us to be obedient. He wants me to be obedient. And that's not always easy because, because I'm being stretched and I'm having to use courage and I'm having to do things that I've never done. And Lynn and I were talking this morning, kids, those are easy for me. I can do kids all day long. But God is asking me to step out and he's asking me to be obedient. And he's asking me to start doing things with adults. And that's not always easy for me. But I want to be obedient because he is everything to me. He is everything. I love my family so much, but I love God more. And I want to be obedient. And God wants us to be obedient. He wants us. Admit, COVID didn't catch him by surprise. He's still working. He's still moving in ways that we don't even have. We don't have a clue. But God's going to open doors. And God wants us to be obedient. If you'll listen, the smallest thing that God asks you to do, is going to change somebody's life, and it's going to draw them to you. God is using me at work that I didn't even realize what was going on with my boss has been noticing some things and that I didn't realize that I was doing, but it's because I've been obedient. And so every day, one, every day, one day at a time, take one step, one small step, and watch and see how God is going to change the world around you. I think we're going to like Jerry's sermon a lot better. We're going to like mine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for those words of uh, encouragement uh, today. So uh, let's get right into God's word today. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, uh, beginning with verse number 18. We're doing a series on a new thing. 
just seemed to coincide really well with the fact that we flipped the page on the calendar and we got out of 2020 and we're going into 2021. I don't know about you guys, but so far 2021 seems a lot like 2020 so far. Uh, but I'm thankful that God is, uh, God is in control. And we're, we're talking about a new thing, and, and I, want to share, I want to share some things with you. Most of you know if you've been attending. Uh, and and we, we try to, uh, given the limitations of being able to get together and, and all the social distancing and everything we're trying to do, we do use social media a lot to try and communicate with the church and so uh, with our church family. And so uh, many of you have, uh, are aware of the fact that... Um, I encourage and challenge our, those of us that, that attend Crossroads to begin January 4th with 21 days of prayer and fasting. I want to share with you a couple of interesting things that uh, has been a part of my journey and my experience with, it, uh, with this, and it all kind of falls into place with the subject that we're doing, we've been studying on, a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in our lives. Uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says this, Remember not the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. And I, I really wish this morning that you would put your name in the Scripture here. Whatever your name is, behold, I am doing an, an, an Enter your name in that part of that Scripture. Alfred, behold, I am doing a new thing in your life. Amen. Shane, behold, I am doing a new thing. And your life, and just put your name there, and personalize this this morning. I believe God, I believe God is trying to speak to us throughout Scripture. Jesus said it uh, in His when He would teach, and also we read this in the Book of Revelation. We read this phrase over and over: "He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying." I believe God wants to speak to us today. How many of you are willing to listen? <laughs> amen. How many of you wives just wish your husband would listen? Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> But God, God is wanting us to listen because I believe he's got some real, real words of encouragement for it. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, and now it springs forth. Do not, uh, or do you not perceive it? And I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, I don't know if I'm hungry or not, but when I first looked at that, my mind said desert. But no, it's, it's not desert, it's desert. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the the desert. I, you know, I challenged you last week, uh, whenever God wants to do a new thing in our lives, usually the hardest step is the first step, that first step. There's, we have folks, and we have a few, and our, our, our numbers increased, and then when we started having some outbreak of COVID, then they really decreased in service, and now they're starting to trend back up. And but we have a number of our church family that are home watching our, our, YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel today. And so I, I have really encouraged our, our church family and the fact that, uh, you know, there are many that there are probably some that are watching YouTube that have never actually attended our church because they, they're just afraid to take that first step. And sometimes that first step is the hardest step. I, I shared last week, I, I love the Chinese people. They've given us really great cheap toys, coronavirus, and great parables. And, and great sayings. <laughs> and, and one thing they've given us, and I, I, I shared this last week, that uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And so to, to experience a new thing in your life, you have to take that first step. Making changes that last is the challenge, though. So, so what, what do we do after that first step? I, I really want to deal with, with this this morning because most of us are very well aware and familiar with failed diets. How many of you have failed in a diet, and they come up with new diets all the time? Uh, many of us are aware of uh, you've, you've purchased workout equipment, and you know it's for exercise, but after a few weeks, you find yourself just hanging clothes on it. <laughs> it, doesn't, it, doesn't get much, it doesn't get much work. And, and how many of you have uh, how many of you have gotten a gym membership and, and they've had to send out search and rescue because they've never, <laughs> they've never actually seen you in the gym? And for most of us Christians, we get fired up sometime. We hear a sermon. We hear a podcast. Or maybe something, something significant happens in our life. We run to the bookstore. Man, I'm going to get me a new Bible, and I'm going to read that Bible. And then you go back a year or two later, and it's still a brand new. <laughs> hasn't hasn't hardly been used. And so... Most of us are aware of the fact that we take that first step 
because we want to face the challenge. We know God wants to do a new thing in our life. Well, we're trying to make an important change in our life. And sometimes it's really difficult because, because we just tend to fall into the patterns of our, of our past. I believe in 2021, I believe it's supposed to be an incredible year for you as a follower of Jesus and for our church family. I really, really believe that. Now, uh, you know, I, I shared with the congregation, challenged us that if, if we would do 21 days of prayer and fasting, and I didn't, I, I didn't try to fill in the blanks for you. I didn't ask anyone to actually fast 21 days straight, but to be targeted with it and to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and maybe take it on a day-by-day basis. Maybe it would be social media one day that you would set aside. Maybe it would be uh, Netflix one day. Maybe you would fast some food. Just whatever it would be that, that God would lead you. And I have to admit, the first week, that uh, in my own personal journey with this 21 days of prayer and fasting, the first week was really, really rough. I've ne- I just can't remember the last time I had felt such opposition and such spiritual oppression. And it's just like it just wasn't clicking. I, it's just like I was trying to get direction, and I, I just couldn't seem to get direction with it. And how many of you know that the, a moment you try to take a step towards the Lord, the enemy's going to try to be there to try to resist you? And sometimes that's a good indication that you're on the right road. If the devil's not bothering you today, it's because he's got you right where he wants you. Oh, that's some good preaching. Could we take an offering for the preacher today? If a devil's not bothering sit down, Jim. I was just kidding. He, he's, he's such a wonderful guy. He'll just do what I ask him to do. But, you know, if, if the devil's not bothering you, but if he's bothering you today, if you're finding opposition, that means that God is trying to do something. I've noticed something over the period of my life and the years I've been in ministry and many different types of ministry is that when God wants to do something significant and something powerful and something life-changing in your life, the enemy proceeding up to that moment of that season in your life, the enemy is going to come against you with everything that he has. So when you're, if you're feeling oppression today and you're feeling anxiety and you're feeling depression, you're feeling all of these things that the enemy uses against us, if you're feeling that today, if you're feeling hopeless, know that that's probably an indication that God's up to something. I'm so glad he's up to something. He's up to something in your life today. And he may not be giving you a, a step-by-step uh, account of what he's doing. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what faith is all about. And we're going to talk about faith here in a moment. And how many of you realize that faith requires unanswered questions? There are times we just have to step out and we just have to step out in faith and say, God, I don't understand this. I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to trust you and I'm going to believe you because I know, God, that you are up to something. So this morning, I, I specifically want to talk about faith that moves Mountains. Now, as I mentioned, the first week of the 21 days, I, when I was doing some targeted fasting and praying and just other things to try to draw closer to, to the Lord, that first week was really, yeah, this is not happening. And I didn't know what the second week was going to be like. But you know what I said? I, I've got to stay with this. I, I feel like this is what God wants me to do. And so the second week, then God really started talking to me. And I'm not talking about voices that I need medication for. I love, I love the fact the Lord speaks to me. And those other voices that I hear, the fact I love about them is they're really happy voices. I will never take medication for those. Some people hear voices that torment them. My, hap- my voices are really happy. I live in just an amazing, incredible world. But God started dealing with me personally and about our church, to me laying out a vision and a challenge for us that he wants to bring us to a place that we have faith that can move mountains. Because we've, we're, we're praying prayers that don't seem to be answered. And we're struggling and believing God to do the miraculous, and it's not happening. And I've, I've got a bulletin for you. When you read the book of Acts, or you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you read the book of Hebrews, it says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If, if God's not working in our lives, the problem is likely not on God's end. Can I get an amen there? The problem's not on God's end. The problem is on our end. And how many times did did Jesus just rebuke his disciples and said, Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? How how many of you just recognize I threw a little King James Version on you there? Why are you so fearful, O you of little faith? And I believe in the second week, God definitely began to stretch my faith. And God began to lay some things in my heart to begin to believe him for that don't even make sense. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. 
God has a plan for your life, and God has a plan for this church that far supersedes anything. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. The Apostle Paul said, according to the power that works in us, I'm thankful that Jesus died and he rose from the dead. And he said, in that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and I. How in the world could we ever lose if that resurrection power is working in us? So, so moving on to, to, to other steps, we, that first step is important, to, to take a step towards the Lord. And, and I think the 21 days of prayer and fasting was an important step for us. It, it's, a, it's a step of faith. Because how many of you know you don't, you don't reap the same day that you sow the seed? You have to sow the seed, and it takes time. And so we have to sow some good seed here. And, know, and we know that God is faithful and he's just. And if, we, if we're faithful and we keep on sowing, and we keep on praying, and we keep on fasting, we keep on believing God, we keep on trusting in Him, we know that there's going to be a payday one day. And I want to tell you something, when God, God's, God's paydays are awesome, he's going, to do, he's going to give you more and more and more than you could ever possibly believe Him for. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2 says this, Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. I mean, I think it's good that we are enthusiastic. We need more enthusiasm in the church. We need more passion. I love to be around people that are passionate about their faith. I don't really like to spend time with people that are complaining all the time, and I don't know why God won't do this, and I don't know why that, and why does this have to happen to me, and woe is me. And I don't really like to, now, if I'm around somebody like that, I'll try, to, I'll try to encourage them. But I love to be around people that are passionate. Even when they're going through hell, they'll say, man, I don't understand what's going on, but I know God is on my side. And if he is for me, who can be against me? I know I'm going to come through this victorious because greater is he that's within me than he that is in this world. So, so we start with enthusiasm. We start with passion. And, and let me tell you something. Enthusiasm and passion are contagious. Now, right now, we've got this thing that's going around that's contagious, and we all have to wear masks, and we all have to social distance, and we, we have to do all those things to try to protect ourselves. But there are other things that we can be contagious with. We can be contagious with passion for the Lord. We can be contagious with enthusiasm. We can be contagious with joy. We can be contagious with God's spirit. It's my prayer that when, and I appreciate so much what Jerry shared, but when we go out into this community and we rub shoulders with people, what's in us is going to come out. And I pray that what's in us is the spirit of the living God that will touch the hearts and lives of people, that will encourage them, that will help elevate them out of their dark places, and we can give people hope and we can bless them and we can love them because that's the ministry and that's the mission that God's called us to do. But success is in the follow-through, not just that initial passion or enthusiasm that we have because we all are going to suffer setbacks from time to time. We're all going to make mistakes, and sometimes we might even sin. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful what, what John wrote and said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, guys, it's not really the mistake or the setback that matters. It's what you do next. It's not the mistake. It's not the setback. It's what you do next. And if you fall and if you stumble, I share this verse from time to time. The Bible says a righteous man shall fall seven times, but he gets back up. And if you fall, if you get back up, it's what you do next. And what you do next is say, okay, all right, God, I, I messed up there, or that was a setback, or that was a mistake, or I didn't, I didn't believe you, I didn't trust you, and I acted in the flesh, and I got myself in a jam. But today, Lord, I'm expecting you. The, the next thing is the important thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back, and I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to ask for forgiveness, and I'm, I'm going to be reconciled to him and, and have the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But it's in that process after that initial passion and, and enthusiasm, that process that we, that we trust in him and, and we believe God to do some incredible things in our lives. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says this. And I want to challenge you this morning in our remain, remaining moments to, have, to, to develop faith that moves mountains. And this is what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. We don't pray much, but oftentimes when we do, we're like that person that prays in James 
James wrote about and said that he's a man who's unstable in all his ways. He, he can't seem to make up his mind. Is God going to do this or is he not? And I want to encourage you to pray, but I want, I want to encourage you to pray in faith. And a lot of times we, we, we struggle with the circumstances that we face. And, and we know that we serve a miracle working God. And we know that we want to see miracles in our life. But how many of you know before you can see a miracle in your life, you have to first face an impossible situation? So if you're there this morning, if you find yourself in an impossible situation, maybe it's, it's a situation that's playing out in your family. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's a health condition that you're facing. And it looks impossible to you. That's exactly where God needs you to show and reveal his mighty power in your life. How many of you know that his grace is sufficient for every situation? When you pray, you have to believe that he exists, that he is, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I, I just believe that God wants to return unto us the joy of our salvation. I believe he wants to take us back. How many of you remember, how many of you remember when you, uh, let me ask you, how many, how many uh, married people do we have here today? Okay, put your hands down. How many people are in love today? Let me see. Oh, Lord, we're going to have to do some marriage counseling in the, in the church. I lost a, I lost a few of them. <laughs> But, but you guys know, and I, and I know, and it was almost 100%. Everybody, everybody was married, raised their hand because you guys knew you better because <laughs> uh, you didn't want to be in the hospital next to the COVID patients. But, you know, the thing about it is, is, is that you guys remember what it was like when you first met each other and you fell in love. And there was, there was that passion there. That was the excitement. You couldn't, couldn't wait to be with each other. And, you know, over a period of time, as you get married and the weeks and the months and the years roll by, obviously the relationship changes. And maybe you don't quite have that same feeling as you did in those early days, but your love deepens and it grows more profound. And your love is it's much, more, you know, much more mature and it's much more solid because you understand commitment and you understand love and all those things that the other was just chemistry and Probably shouldn't say this in church, but hormones and all those other things that are taking place in those in those early days. But but sometimes as a believer, we kind of we kind of get into the same trap. We we come to faith in Christ, and there's an excitement, and we feel like, man, I could I think I could save the whole world. And then weeks and months and years roll by, and before you know it, that which is so special and that which is so precious and that which is so amazing just becomes so commonplace, and we sort of take it for granted, and we lose sight of how blessed that we really are. And I want to encourage you, don't just seek him. Earnestly seek him. We have another week of 21 days in prayer and fasting. Some of you may have never even got started. Well, start and maybe you don't do 21 days. Maybe you do seven days. <laughs> start this week and, and get engaged and, and really connect with him and allow him to grow your faith because God wants us to have faith that moves mountains. Because some of you are here this morning and you're facing a mountain. A mountain is representative or illustrates an impossible situation. I'm thankful we serve a God that can do the impossible. I don't know about you if you're discouraged and defeated all the time and maybe the Jesus that you serve is weak and maybe you think he's still in the tomb or whatever. But, but the Jesus that I serve... When, when John saw a picture of him in, in the book of Revelation and he saw his hair as white as wool and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet shone as brass and he had on a garment and a, and a gold belt and his, his glory was so bright. It was like, and he said it was like trying to stare at, at the sun at the noon hour. And he said, and when he, when he spoke, when he saw Jesus, he said when he spoke, his voice was as, as the sound of many waters. I'm thankful this morning. That's the Jesus that I serve. He is powerful. He is mighty. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was in the beginning at creation. He is a second person of the Trinity. He is coming back, crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. And Trump was never my hope, and Biden is not my problem, because I know who sits on the throne, and I know who's in control. And so my eyes are upon him today, because he is my source, and he is my strength, and he is my help. And he is your help today. So I really want to encourage you, allow him. Get that connection with him in these last seven days. Allow God to do some amazing things in your life because he wants to breathe in us this faith, grow in us faith that moves mountains. Jesus talked a lot about prayer, and I want to go to one of those parables that Jesus 
uh, taught in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 5. And Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend. He's teaching on prayer. In fact, if you read the verses just previous to this, Jesus has taught them what we call the Lord's Prayer. You know, our Father which art in heaven, that prayer. And so he continues to teach about prayer. And he said, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Now, you don't want to do that in Texas. You don't want to be banging on your neighbor's door at midnight asking for bread. Because some of you folks are a little amped up. You got way too many guns. You're a little trigger happy. So don't mess with Texas. That's all I can say. But in that culture, hospitality was, was very, very important. Hospitality was a very, very important part of their culture, that they, they showed hospitality to each other. So if you had a neighbor that came to you at midnight and, and uh, needed something because of, the, because of their culture and, and, and the emphasis they put on hospitality and being a good neighbor, um, they, would, uh, they would get up and, and try, to, and try to, to take care of that need for their friend or their neighbor. But this happens, this happens at midnight. Verse 6, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And I suppose, now, if you ever show up at my house at midnight and want to be fed, I'm not Jewish, so it's not going to happen. All right. Well, it might if the Lord makes me do it. Verse 7, and suppose the one inside says, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Verse 8, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, I love that. He will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Now, I like that because oftentimes, you know, our, our, you know, our praying, our praying is so, you know, so sweet. Our, our, our Christianity is so sweet. And we pray those wonderful little prayers. Our, you know, our fathereth. Oh, wait a second. I feel like I'm in the Tim Tebow. No. Our fathereth who hardeth and heaveneth. And we want it to be so Oh, we want it to be so precious, so, so sweet. But, but Jesus said, don't, no, don't pray like that. Jesus said, when you pray, pray with shameless audacity. When's the last time you heard your relationship with Christ defined or your prayer life defined or you were taught to pray, to pray with shameless audacity? Because in light of this parable, then Jesus continues, look at verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Ask with what? Shameless audacity audacity. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And so I want you to think in terms of this. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Because when this friend came over in the parable, he didn't just knock one time. He kept knocking and said, I have people. They've showed up at my house. I don't have any food. Please give me something that I can share with them. So he was persistent, persistent, and we need to have those that same persistence. I can tell you guys that right now what I have felt challenged in my spirit is that as believers, our prayers are too small. We serve a big God. We should be praying Big. You have nothing to lose by praying big, by asking God to do something big in your life. Some of you have family members that you have on your unsavable list. You kind of throw in a weak prayer up every now and then. Well, I, you know, they're so hard headed. I don't know that it's ever going to happen, I, but I have to cross it off my prayer list. Lord, you know, save, save my uncle. Lord, save my spouse. Lord, save my kids. And we're throwing up a weak prayer. Pray big. Don't just pray that God will save them. Pray God will call them in the ministry and send them to the mission field. Then you got rid of them. Can I get amen there? No, no, pray big. Believe God. I wonder how many answers are unclaimed because we simply didn't ask. Or we didn't ask big. Or we didn't pray with that shameless audacity. Uh, we got to pray for big things. We have to believe for big things. Matthew chapter 9, verse 21 through 22. This is one of my favorite miracles uh, that Jesus performed, and, and Jesus really was not trying to perform. This happened. This happened in the life and the ministry of Jesus, and it was almost he was om, almost oblivious to the event when it took place. 
But there was a woman that had an issue of blood. Jesus was actually going to minister to someone else, and he was surrounded by a crowd of people. And there was a woman, the Bible described, that had internal bleeding, that she fought through the crowd, and she reached out, and she touched the hem of the, gar- the garment of Jesus and was healed. And Jesus didn't even, wasn't even hardly aware that it happened until he realized that something, there was a, there was a transfer, there was an exchange of power. Look, I, I, okay, churches have rules. Look, churches have rituals. Look. Church, church, we have our culture. We have our own vocabulary. But what it's, it's not about those things. It's about having a touch from Him. Some of us this morning, we need a fresh touch from Him. Your batteries are running on so low, you're barely making it. You need a fresh touch from Him. So I want to encourage you to, to reach out and touch the hem of His garment. And you can be made whole like this woman. And so Jesus, uh, in, in, in this story where Jesus, and he, he touched her and then, he turned around at one point and said, who touched me? And the disciples are stunned. Like, what do you mean, Lord, who touched you? There's like hundreds of people that are crowding in around you. They're all brushing up against you. He said, no, 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 no. I don't mean somebody touched me. I said, I mean, somebody touched me. There are some people that come to church and worship, and there are some people that come to church and worship. It's a different thing. It's two different things. There are a lot of people that are brushing up against Jesus, but he was like a sideshow. He was the latest thing. It was a, they didn't have TV. They didn't have Netflix back then. So they had to have some type of entertainment. Well, this Jesus of Nazareth, he's doing miracles. And I hear he feeds people. How many of you like to be fed? Amen. So they were. he had crowds everywhere he went, but this woman was desperate. And she pressed through and she touched. There were hundreds of other people that could have had their lives changed. But they came to church. Uh, You know, I'm not really into it. I've heard this song before. You know, okay, well, amen, praise God. And they walk out the door. But then there's some people that step into church that he touches them and their life has changed forever. And so I want to encourage you to to press through and touch the hem of his garment. But this this was the reason why she experienced this. Verse 21, Matthew 9, she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. And Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. And you know what set that miracle up? I I read this recently, and it just like jumped out at my face like lasers. She said to herself, because you are either victorious or you defeated today by what you're telling yourself. You're going to get exactly from God what you expect to get from Him. Whether it's a church service, whether it's 21 days of prayer and fasting, whether it's just your everyday walk, you're getting from God exactly what you expect from Him because fear and faith work exactly the same way. If you walk in fear, the things that you fear are going to happen. But if you walk in faith, the things that you're believing God for will happen, and God will do not only the few things that you're asking for, He'll do exceeding abundantly above. You pray for one You pray for one unsaved loved one. God will give you two. God will give you five. God will give you ten. Because that's the way way that faith works. She said within herself, we talk ourselves out of so many miracles because the storm is so intense, because the enemy looks too big. She said to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I believe everything that I've been told about him. And what, you know, if a woman that didn't even know, hardly know who he was could believe everything that was told to her about Jesus, why can't you and I just believe what the word of God tells us about God's work in our life and his grace and his mercy and answered prayer? Amen? Man, that's good preaching. I'm about to get saved up in here. She said to herself, well, how, how can we build ourselves up? Well, I mean, there's two things real quickly, man. We gotta, obviously, we've got to spend time in his word. And I, I, as I've gotten older and, and more mature in my walk with the Lord, I spend more time mentally staying in God's word, literally throughout the day recalling Bible verses because, you know, if, our, if we're in a battle, our minds are the battlefield, guys. And so you have to protect your mind. And so I build myself up by thinking on God's word, but I also build myself up by testimonies. I love to hear testimonies. And I recall God's blessing in my life. And I testify to myself about the, the things that God has done. She said to herself, what are you saying to yourself today? Are you encouraging yourself? Are you defeating yourself? If I can only touch his cloak, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Let me close with this. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus in another place was talking about faith. And he was saying, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea 
and does not doubt in, his, in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. How many of you believe Jesus was lying? Oh, wait a second. Some of you raised your hand. No, listen to what I said. How many believe he was lying? No, 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 he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. He, he's not a liar. Satan's a liar. Satan's a liar and the father of all lies, but Jesus spoke the truth here. And he said, if you will believe, if you'll pray, whatever you ask in prayer, Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. If you're praying for rain, start carrying an umbrella. Amen. So start, start, start acting upon it before you receive it. Just start, just start believing God for whatever. What, and you know, you're praying for a financial miracle. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But that's okay. You hang in there. Because sometimes when God's working behind the scene, the enemy knows, the enemy knows what God is wanting to do in your life. And the enemy's going to work overtime to try, because if he at the last moment can get you to start walking in fear again, then you can lose out on what God, remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the moment I step out of faith and I step into fear, or I step into doubt, or I step into the unbelief, or I step into criticism, or I step in complaints, or I start worrying about stuff, and I stay in that, in that realm, then I begin to lose out on everything that God has for me. He responds to us. Let me say this in closing. We see all the things that are happening in this world. We see all the injustice. We see all the people that are struggling. We see Christians many times that are not experiencing the very best that God has for them. God does not respond to need. God responds to faith. God does not respond to need. If God just responded to, to purely just needs, there'd be no needs left. But there's a reason why Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock on the door. The only limits that are placed on God are the limits that we place on him to work in our lives. Guys, let's allow God to give us faith that moves mountains. Grow your faith to believe him for miraculous things to happen in your life, your family, our church, and our community. Father, we just thank you, Lord, today for your work in our lives. We're thankful for your grace. And we're so thankful that even though God... We, we fail you, and we're not always faithful. You're always faithful to us. Father, I pray, that you have, I pray that you've already begun to work in our lives to have that faith that moves mountains because we know, God, that without faith, it's impossible to, for, without faith, it's impossible to please you. So he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he rewards those that earnestly seek him. And we want to seek you earnestly. We want to believe you. We want to step out in faith. We want to believe you for big things, not just small things, but big things. Because we know, God, that you're a big God. You're almighty God, and there's nothing too hard for you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your uh, protection, your guidance. We thank you, Lord, that, you know, Father, we've had some in our family that have been affected by, by COVID. But, Lord, you brought healing. And we're just so thankful for your healing power and your protection. And we just ask, Lord, give us wisdom and direction from here on out. And they will walk in the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. God bless.